Hi DIYers, this is Michael from AlarmGrid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Honeywell LTE XA or Honeywell LTE XV um, cellular communicator to a Honeywell Vista P series security system. Uh, those being the Vista 10P, Vista 15P, Vista 20P, and Vista 21 IP. Uh, those are the P series panels. Um, and just to give you a quick reminder, uh, for Total Connect 2.0, uh, you can't use it on uh, the Vista 10P. Uh, you'll just be using this module for um, communications uh, with AlarmNet and the central station. Uh, you won't have access to Total Connect on a 10P. Um, if you have a Vista 15P or 20P, then you need a firmware version uh, 9.12 or higher to get Total Connect. And on a 21 IP, you need a version 3.13 or higher. Uh, so check the PROM chip for your system to uh, verify the firmware version. If you need an upgrade, uh, we have those available, um, but that's a different topic. Um, just make sure you're aware of, of that. Um, so anyway, uh, we have our, uh, today we're using a Honeywell LTE XA, which is the AT&T version. The LTE XV is the Verizon LTE version. Uh, go with whichever one works better in your area, which whenever, whichever network provides uh, stronger cell signals. So uh, we have our uh, Vista 21 IP here today. And um, we're going to be powering it down and connecting the, the communicator. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is power the system down. And so we're going to just uh, undo the battery right here, just pull the, the connection there. If you're having trouble getting it, kind of just twist it off and, and pull it off like that. And then uh, we're going to do the transformer next. Um, in our case, we're using a Honeywell LT cable. So we can just uh, undo the barrel connection. But um, I do want to point out that if you um, don't have a Honeywell LT cable, you just have wires at the panel. And then uh, a good option is to unplug the transformer, which it's, it's a base transformer like this. Um, just locate the transformer on your system and find it and unplug it. Note that there's a little set screw uh, that you may need to undo. Um, some people just remove the set screw because it's kind of annoying. But um, if you do need to remove it, do that. Um, and if you are having trouble finding uh, the transformer, uh, we don't recommend disconnecting the wires at the panel. Um, instead, we recommend cutting the power at the, the circuit breaker. So just as a safety tool, you can go and do that. And the system already knows that the battery is low because I've been going on too much about this. But um, that's, that's how you're going to um, disconnect power. You're going to um, shut off power. But like I said, in our case, we have the Honeywell LT cable here. So we can just do this. And then the system powers down. You see the key keypads uh, went blank. Um, there's nothing on the system. We're good to go. Now, since we are using a 21 IP system, we do have to disable the internal IP communicator. This is only for the 21 IP. Um, what you're doing is you're disabling the, uh, the internet communicator, so that way you can use the cellular communicator, um, or the external communicator, I should say. Whenever you add an external communicator to the 21 IP, you need to disable this internal communicator. And this is done by moving the jumper from these top two prongs to the bottom two prongs. Um, so it'll be, there, there are three prongs in there, so it was on the top and the middle, and now it's on the middle and the bottom. So you just want to do that. And make sure your system's powered down. When you do that, you could damage the system if you uh, forget to power down before moving the jumper. So make sure you power down first. And now we're going to begin uh, connecting the LTEXA. Um, again, we're using the AT&T model. The, the Verizon model follows the same process uh, to our uh, Vista 21 IP. So uh, we have the module right here. Um, we have it completely um, not set up at all. Um, we're going to start from scratch. So uh, we do have to connect uh, this piece to the bottom of it so it can uh, fit into the panel's uh, metal enclosure or, or metal can, so to speak. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute. But the first thing we need to do is open up the, the module. It's got a Phillips head um, screw right here, so we'll just go and we'll do that. And there, we've opened up the module and uh, we've, got it, um, we've got access to the inside. So we've got our plastic piece here and we can just insert it into the slot here so the tabs align and it just clicks into place just like that. So um, that's what you want to do first. Um, you can have it. Um, so it's going to be, be sitting on top of the panel right here. That's where it's going to go. Um, that's the slot for it. So um, what we need to do, uh, we have um, a four wire connection. Um, it has a port for connecting with the communicator and then four wires for uh, connecting at the panel. Um, so what we need to do, we're going to, um, we're going to connect it to this uh, slot here. There we go. And then um, what I'm going to do first, um, I'm going to do the washer. Um, this is the washer that secures the, um, the communicator to the panel. And it's threaded, and you can just uh, thread it onto here. It's easier, easiest to do this before you uh, start running the wire to the panel. But uh, if you do forget, you can 
do it afterwards, but we'll just uh, go and screw that in. Make sure that's tight and kind of keeps it a little bit more stable. And there we go. We got that taken care of. So now we're going to take our wires and we're going to just run them through the hole here. And just uh, pull everything together. Make sure it's not caught on your systems communicator. And there we go. So we've got our wires run through. And now we can begin connecting at the panel. OK, so we're going to begin uh, doing our four wire connection. Uh, we're going to start with the, the black wire, which um, is for negative power, also known as the ground connection. Just loosen up the terminal a little bit and to where we can stick it in there. Then we have the red wire, which is for positive power. The black wire went to terminal 4, and the red wire is going to terminal 5. And this is for uh, positive power. OK, and then we have the green wire, which goes to terminal 6. This is one of the data connection wires. And last, we have the yellow wire, uh, which goes to terminal 7. Uh, you may also see some white wires in there. Um, if you are just matching colors, which a lot of people will do because they'll already have the keypads installed, um, then just match the yellow with the white wire. Um, some, sometimes you see those instead of yellow. OK, good. And we'll just give that a quick tug. Looks like our green wire is a little bit loose. Uh, we will get that a little bit better. And we're good to go. Um, one thing I do want to note before you go and close the, the module, um, make sure to write down the MAC and CRC codes um, on the communicator, on the sticker. Um, take a picture of them or write them down and keep them somewhere safe. Uh, you will need them for a monitoring service to activate the communicator. Um, and I also want to note that this communicator will draw up to 250 milliamps of current um, when it's transmitting signals. Um, so make sure to consider that into your current calculation um, and add an external power supply if necessary. But make sure you calculate those 250 milliamps. Um, OK, so we're going to close the module now. Um, we're just going to kind of get the wires out of the way there. And well, I don't really change much, but we, we can close it there. And we'll just screw this down. OK, uh, we've got that screwed down, taken care of. Uh, so now we're going to begin uh, powering our panel back on. And uh, we're going to do the transformer first. Um, like I said, we're using the Honeywell LT cable. Um, if you applied, if you dis, if you disconnected power at the breaker, then, then flip your breaker switch. If you unplugged um, or the beige transformer, then uh, plug that back into the wall. Um, reapply the set screw if necessary. But if you do have the luxury of using a Honeywell LT cable, then just reapply the barrel connection like we did, and then your system uh, should power back on. Uh, you see our keypads lit up, um, and we do see some LED lights on the the, tran uh, the communicator, indicating that it, it's receiving power. So I'm also going to do the backup battery while I'm over here, just so that stays charging. Put that back up there. OK. Um, and you do see that uh, hardware comes included uh, with, the, with the communicator. So you can uh, mount this on a wall if you prefer, um, but uh, we like to just do the can. It's, it's very easy to do that. Um, uh, if you can get a strong enough cell signal, then by all means, then like, do this. It's a pretty simple process here. Um, so you will want to check the LED lights on the, on the communicator um, to verify cell signal strength. Uh, for most people, that this won't be a concern. Uh, most areas get covered pretty well by the LTE networks, whether you're using AT&T or Verizon. Uh, but if you are in a rural area or you have the panel tucked away, maybe in a closet or something, then it, it can be hard to get a, a good cell signal. So, uh, make sure to check the LED lights and uh, refer to the manual uh, for more information of what they what they mean. Uh, there should be a manual that came with your LTE XA or LTE XV. And uh, you will need to activate this communicator for monitoring service. Uh, you will need a monitoring plan that can that that does include uh, cellular communication, as this is a cellular communicator. So um, if you're signing up for service with Alarm Grid, then we'll contact you at your scheduled activation slot that you chose. And we'll walk you through the rest of the process. Um, a technician will be on the line with you. We'll tell you what you need to do, and we'll take care of it on our end uh, to get this uh, communicator working properly. So that's how you add a Honeywell LTE XA or Honeywell LTE XV to a Honeywell Vista P series system, uh, these being the Vista 10P, Vista 15P, Vista 20P, and Vista 21IP. Um, remember, the IP has that jumper, only the, uh, the 21IP. But, um, 
If you have any questions about the LTE XA or LTE XV or about alarm monitoring services in general, send an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up below to like the video. And remember to subscribe to our channel for updates on future videos. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.